Let's get into today's market action in our closing bell exchange. Nathan Backrack from Financial Network Group is with us. Yes, Ed Potowski from Chatwood Investments made it, along with our own Steve Leisman and Rick Santelli. Gentlemen, good to see you all. Thank you for joining us today. Nathan, I read that you are 50-50 right now, 50% stocks, 50% uh, bonds. Why not all in on stocks right these days? Uh, because I got to live with clients who want to retire and they want to make sure their money doesn't die before they do, Bill. All but right. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm waiting to see whether or not Washington can mess things up, which they are very <laughs> capable of doing. I don't feel as if uh, the sequester is really getting the attention that it deserves right now. And I think that the consumer is waiting to see if, in fact, we can get through and finish getting the $4 trillion worth of cuts that we need to get done so that everybody will be happy. If we don't do that, I think the consumer is going to go back in their shell and it's going to look like fourth quarter. If, however, we see that uh, uh, Washington doesn't screw things up anymore, then I think very likely you're going to see a nice, you're going to see a second quarter that's going to look a lot like third quarter last year. That's a, that's a big bet there you're making, uh, Nathan. Steve Leisman, uh, separate facts from fiction for us. What will sequestration do to the economy, in your view? What are we expecting to happen if, in fact, these automatic cuts do happen come March 1? Uh, there's just no doubt, Maria, it will be a hit to the economy. And it's a hit that's going to, you know, join with the payroll tax increase that's happened, uh, along with higher gas prices, which hopefully, given some of the news today, we might get a little relief from. I'll tell you that the outlook on this morning's retail sales numbers were sort of really watched with a guarded eye. They weren't too bad. Uh, they didn't revise away December's gains. But with those payroll tax cuts hitting and, and, and also tax increases hitting and the rising gas prices, there's concern that there is yet to be a hit to come from uh, the, 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 uh, the, the higher taxes, Maria. So join that to reduce federal spending uh, that could happen from the sequester. Uh, I think that's absolutely right. What was said earlier, that Washington could yet mess up what is even just a 2% economy right now. Ed Batowski, uh, uh, what's your thought on that? Especially, uh, you know, one of the big stories we're following is this currency war to the bottom, which seems to benefit equities yeah. right now. Uh, but, that, that, you know, how does that factor into all of this right now, do you think? Well, it factors quite a bit. I mean, you know, really what you're having is a race to the bottom in terms of equities. I mean, excuse me, in terms of currencies. I mean, you saw Venezuela do it. You're right. probably going to see more European nations do it. Um, and obviously, Japan is doing it. And what that does is it makes our currency worth less. So they do that. These countries do it, including our country, to try to make our exports more attractive. And that will help our stock prices, basically, because there might be more earnings, because a lot of our earnings come from outside of our borders. So that's why we're seeing that devaluation of the currency. And, so do you, does you know, that I don't make know you want to buy ends. stocks more? Well, there's no question about it. In fact, uh, I'm really surprised that he's 50-50 in terms of his portfolios because I don't know any good reason to not only buy a bond right now, but to own one because they've all gone up in value. But the yield to maturity over the next 10 years is very, very small. I advise all my clients to get out of any interest rate sensitive bonds today. Not right. hold on. Get out of them. Well, you well, know, Nathan, I, just, I Nathan, can't afford he's... to play with other people's money. Ed. That's, I'm sorry. I got I to live with people long in and long out. And I think Same we're going to see a Nathan. trading range here. Go ahead, go, go ahead Nathan. Nathan. All right, well, we're going to see a trading range on bonds. Every time they go up a little over two, we get to two and a quarter, yeah. then they're going to go back. They're going to bounce around for a while. This is not a recovery that's going to run away and destroy bond value, much as we saw in the late 70s. Is that what you're seeing, uh, Rick Santelli, in terms of this trading range? Yes, it is. But there is a couple, there's a couple caveats. You know, first of all, uh, as we move towards lower and lower yields over the last four or five years, even when they were just under three or just under two, principal appreciation was a driving force. Those that were in bonds would say, well, I feel safer, but heck, the price goes up and I don't do badly. It isn't just about the rate. Well, after we reach the historic low under 140, there's a bit less of that. So even do, though I do think maybe the best days of rates are behind us, I think the correction is going to be small, maybe two and a quarter to two and a half. I don't see it on the wild side. But to add into everybody's currency argument, there's one other reason weakening currencies for indebted nations is good. You get to pay everybody back in cheaper currency. 
Great. Yeah. 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 How, yeah how look, Rick, we're refinancing all of our debt, and we're doing it at about two percent. All of America wishes they could do that. It's going to be great. But I'll tell you something: energy costs are going to continue to go down. We're going to become energy self-sufficient. And you watch what happens uh, to. Uh, uh, the cost of manufacturing. I'm going to bet you our manufacturing does well because not because our dollar is going to weaken, but because we're going to actually have less expenses going out to energy, and that's going to make us competitive. Yeah, and but unless the next drive. energy jar the president appoints, like the past one, <laughs> thinks maybe put a tax on gas to get it to ten dollars, so the motor mounts for those windmills on Chevys is not going to have to do it, better. Rick. Rick, you can bring your blood pressure down. He's not going to have to do it. We're going to have enough cheap energy that we're going to be okay. I agree and with we're you. The kind of about that, that, that really probably was the single sort of biggest conversation amongst uh, leaders in Davos. That that for the U.S. probably the biggest opportunity for actual moving the needle in terms of energy is That's shale. Right. Is right. that an investable yeah, Maria, place for that is you? True. Maria, it, it's matter, a hugely matter, investable place, but also absolute. dramatic global implications in terms of the U.S. Yeah. current account deficit. If you think about the money we ship now to OPEC and some of that possibly for not sure. being yeah. shipped I'm just trying there. to figure out, let, let, from, from the two investors on the panel, Nathan and Ed, yeah. how, do you, how do you buy that, buy into well, the shale story, if in fact it is one of the single most right. important things in terms of uh, job creation well, yeah, and growth? Yeah, yeah. And Maria, invest, I lived, yeah. you know, I'm right down here Maria, in, in, in the Dallas area where we have the Barnett Shale. I actually have personal investments in the Barnett Shale. We have clients that have investments in the Barnett Shale. And one of the great ways to do it is simply to buy an exchange traded fund that will appreciate as natural gas prices do. I don't so know if they're idea. necessarily going to appreciate so hey, because there's so much in competition Ohio. in it. I right. word here We're going to be pushing right. so much shale right. out of Ohio. We're going to become the next Dallas. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I hope so, because you guys, you guys heard, need something good to happen up there. I always heard the Cincinnati was well, the center of the world. Is that right, Nathan? Yeah, right. Hey, be, right, you're, you're not playing, kidding. We are. I'd be playing North Dakota real estate. I think that's where to put your money. It's always well, the that's real estate. Guys. Guys. There's a lot of cars up there, Steve. All right, guys. We'll see you later. We appreciate your time.